Hi, good morning. <laughs> it seems like uh, the last couple videos I've done uh, for cooking demonstrations, I've said, this recipe is not in my pop it in the toaster oven cookbook. How zen is that? <laughs> But this is true, I have another one and I'm just so eager to try it because it was a wonderful thing for my friend's dog, Butch. Uh, Butch had some cookies and I, he loved them and my dog loved those too. And I said, where did you get them? And my friend said, I made them. Well, that piqued my interest. So she gave me the recipe, and um, I'm going to make them. I haven't made them before, so this is going to be a new experience for me. And I'm, hope, I'm thinking that if they're successful, Charlie will like them. So the first thing I'm going to do is preheat my toaster oven to 350 degrees. So I've assembled all the dog cookie ingredients here and this is a very nice healthy recipe for a dog and in looking at the recipe I'm thinking this is a, a really going to make quite a few dog cookies so <clears throat> my plan is maybe to just make a few and bake them in my toaster oven on my pan there and then save the rest in the refrigerator and make them as needed. Point out to you what I have assembled here. Um, I have uh, three quarters of a cup of water here, a half a cup of cornmeal there, two eggs, and this is a third of a cup of peanut butter, a quarter of a cup of oil here, and in this case I'm using my favorite oil, olive oil, cold press, which I love. And then over here I have uh, oat bran. Bring that up so you can see it. This you can get at the store. It's oat bran right there. And then over here I have two cups, approximately two cups. This is a wet measure, but it's almost the same as a dry measure of unbleached flour here. Um, now, just a, a comment. Um, if your dog has a wheat allergy or a corn allergy, which some dogs do, what I would recommend is using all the um, oat bran, which would be a cup of oat bran instead of cornmeal and oat bran here. And then um, this is, um, you know, flour has wheat in it. So again, um, I don't really know what you could substitute um, but if your dog has eaten dog biscuits with flour in before, you probably wouldn't have a problem with Here that. Here's the toaster oven baking pan I'm going to use. It's lightly oiled. And then I have a mixing bowl here with a spoon. This is going to take some mixing to blend all of these ingredients together. And of course, what I like is that all of the ingredients go into the bowl, just like my my uh, other recipes do and they're mixed well. I have a dog cookie cutter that I'm going to use um, and I think um, what I'm going to do is when I get this together I'm going to roll it out and um, then just make the the cookies um, with this little cutter here. Okay so first of all all of the ingredients go into the bowl so here's the flour the cornmeal, the oat bran, eggs, the sweet potato, and the sweet potato has been cooked and mashed. You can also use bananas if you don't want to go through the, the process of cooking and mashing sweet potatoes. Uh, use, I guess that might be in quantity, a couple pretty good sized bananas instead. There's the peanut butter, it's always kind of sticky. And last but not least, the oil. Okay, 
so this is going to take some mixing. I'm mixing this around and blending all of the ingredients. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm wondering why it's so hard to mix. Oh, I nearly forgot to add the water. Oh, that's better. <sighs> now, I'm going to mix these ingredients around really well. And I have to say that I've had to improvise a little bit. Um, I added another half a cup of cornmeal to this because I'm having to roll out a portion of this dough on a, a floured surface and then I'm going to press it, the cookie cutter into it. Uh, my friend had a, a little silicone dog cookie tray that she could press the dough into so the dough could be a lot wetter. But in my case, because I don't have that, I'm, I had to add more cornmeal to this so that I could actually handle it to, to um, press it. So here are the little dog biscuit shapes. And I'm just cutting them out. This smells really good. It's very like peanutty smelling. I think Charlie's going to like these. So there's the dog cookies out of the tray. And I have to say that, oh, this reminds me of the recipes that I wrote for Pop It in the Toaster Oven. Many times I would take a recipe and adapt it or create a recipe and boy sometimes you know I had to do it two or three times to tweak it to get it right for the for the cookbook and here we are so already we've added extra cornmeal and I have spaced these out not really knowing how they're going to bake um, I would imagine they're not going to change size very much because they're unleveled leavened they don't have any baking powder in them but well here goes. Okay, so here go the dog cookies into the 350 degree toaster oven on the tray. And my friend said 25 to 30 minutes, but because I have inherited this recipe from her, I'm probably going to be looking in on these um, in about 20 minutes. I'm setting the timer right now for 20 minutes. And I think um, probably the other reason why I want to monitor this is because my friend used a full-size oven, and I found that toaster ovens are faster, usually. Quantities are smaller, and the heat is more direct. Well, these dog cookies smell pretty good. Um, it did take 30 minutes in the toaster oven. Um, they look pretty much like Butch's dog cookies looked. Uh, they seem to be baked. I'm going to let them cool and then we'll have to put them to test with Charlie to see how he likes them. And I'm thinking if you have a pretty tight schedule like I do and don't have a big chunk of time for baking many many batches of cookies, um, even in your large oven, um, what I'm going to do, this is my plan, I have the dough here and I put it in a container and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. I'm sure it'll keep for a while, probably a week or two. Then I can take a small quantity, uh, like I did, roll it out and cut out the cookies, pop them in the toaster oven and in 30 minutes Charlie will have some really nice biscuits. Another alternative um, that just occurred to me is what I could do is roll out the dough, all of it, and cut out the cookies and put them in the freezer <laughs> so that um, I can have, uh, they'll keep indefinitely in the freezer raw and then I can just remove them and put them on a cookie sheet and bake them, bake them for Charlie when I have a little time to do that. Okay, here's the true test. Okay, can you sit up for a cookie? Good boy. It's 
say proof is in the cookie, right, Charles? Want another right. one? Can you speak? <laughs> Can you speak for a cookie? <laughs> Good boy.